to stand in the front of, of his servants. Amen. Amen. And uh, I missed you too, very much. <laughs> um, let us pray. Holy Father, mighty God, thank you for Jesus. You sent him to train us, teach us, protect us, and to make you known for us. Today's passage teaches us how Jesus prayed for his disciples. We are his right now. Dear God, he prayed for us and to the whole believers of this world. May you give us the Holy Spirit so that we may prepare our hearts and we may receive your word attentively, prayerfully, and we may be transformed. God, be with us, uh, empower me, and strengthen me, so I may deliver your message in full of spirit. Be with us, I do pray and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today's message is titled by Jesus prays for his disciples. Again, Jesus prays for his disciples. John 17, verse 1 through 26. And the key verse is verse 11b, which says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of the name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Again, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Amen. Amen. Thank God for teaching us joy in Jesus, prayer in Jesus, and victory in Jesus. Amen. Through last Sunday's message. Amen. Amen. In chapter 17, Jesus prays. Today's passage is about Jesus' high priestly prayer. Amen. Our Lord Jesus, the Christ, is high priest, the prophet, and the king. Jesus prays first for himself. Second, Jesus prays for his disciples. And finally, Jesus prays for all believers. Amen. Amen. He prayed right before his arrest, trial, and crucifixion. The content of his prayer is so deep and wide because Jesus included both God and all believers in his high priestly prayer. High priestly is pastor or shepherd of today. Jesus' shepherd's prayer teaches us how to pray as a shepherd, like you and me. Amen. Part 1. Jesus prays to be glorified. Verse 1 through 5. First, Jesus prays for the glory of God. Verse 1 says, after Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the God, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that may glorify you. Amen. Amen. Jesus knew that in a few hours he would be arrested, tried, and crucified. Even in this situation, Jesus never doubted God's love. So he called God Father. Amen. Amen. Now the time has come for Jesus to die on the cross as Pastor Lamb. Once John the Baptist said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1 29. In verse 1, Jesus prays that. God glorify him 
so that we may glorify God as well. In this case, the verb glorify means to shine or to reveal. Glorify is to reveal God's amazing love and saving grace to the whole world as the sun shines on the whole world. How does Jesus reveal God's glory? It is through his crucifixion as the Lamb of God for the sin of the world. Amen. Romans 5 8 says, God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Through his crucifixion, Jesus revealed God's immeasurable love for sinners. Through his resurrection, Jesus revealed God's almighty power and victory. It is indeed amazing that Jesus played to reveal his glory through his most painful death on the cross and resurrection. In his prayer, Jesus reveals his life purpose. For Jesus to live for the glory of God was his everything. In order to glorify God, he could even die on the cross. Jesus' prayer, glorify your son, that your son may glorify you, teaches us that man's chief purpose is to glorify God and enjoy his, Him forever. So, to live for God's glory is to reveal according to the man's chief purpose. Amen. Man's chief purpose is to glorify God. Amen. Also, it is to live for one's own happiness. When we are to live in this world, we are confronted with all kinds of problems which makes us fearful and distressed. When we, are see, when we see the situation of this world, we wonder if we can live for the glory of God. But as Jesus showed us how to live, to glorify to glorify God, even through his death, we also must set our life purpose to, li to live for the glory of God. Amen. St. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, So, whatever you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. We must know that Jesus' people must pray first to live for the glory of God. Amen. Second, Jesus prays to give eternal life. Verse 2 through 5. Verse 2 says, For you granted him authority over all people that may that might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Eternal life is not the extension of troubled or cursed life. Eternal life is to live in God's house forever. Amen. 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 Verse 3 says, Now this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Amen. Amen. Eternal life is to know God, only true God, and Christ Jesus, whom He has sent. Amen. Here, to know means to know God and Jesus personally in your heart, not just with the head. For this reason, those who know Jesus 
and God the Father already have eternal life. Amen. The secret of having eternal life is know God, Jesus. Those who know God, the Father, and the Son, Jesus Christ, already have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that you have eternal life? Yes. <laughs> is it real to you? Is it real? Can you prove that? The moment we personally know and we believe in Jesus, we receive eternal life. John 5, 24. May God help us. Every day to know Jesus more personally and deeply and enjoy his life to the full. Amen. Jesus rendered glory to God while on the earth, by completing the work God had given him to do. His mission was to plant in men's hearts God's love and fight in his son and live in hope in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, and now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Jesus prays to glorify God and to give us eternal life. Amen. Amen. Jesus prays to glorify God and again to give us eternal life. Amen. Amen. Part 2. Jesus prays for his disciples. Verse 6 through 19. Verse 6 says, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They are yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Through his miraculous signs, Jesus revealed that he is the Son of God Almighty. By healing the sick, Jesus revealed God's compassion and love. By planting the kingdom of God in many souls, Jesus revealed God's hope for the world's salvation plan. Amen. In verse 6 through 8, Jesus revealed God's glory by giving them word of God. By receiving the word of God, finally the disciples believed that Jesus came from God. Therefore, one-to-one -one Bible study is very important. Amen. In verse 6 through 19, we learn Jesus' prayer topics for his disciples. Jesus prayed for his disciples because God gave them to him. When we read the gospel stories, we see that his disciples were not friendly to one another. Rather, they were competitive and quarrelsome. But Jesus did not think they are too mean or helpless to be changed and to grow. Jesus suffered endlessly to plant the word of truth in them. Jesus continued to pray for his disciples to be raised as future spiritual leaders. They were not yet spiritual. However, Jesus did not say, oh, you are, not, you are too slow to learn. Look at them. He didn't say, oh, you are too slow to learn. Instead, he said in verse 10 me, and glory has come to me through them. Amen. Amen. Jesus, 
Jesus th thinks that he was glorified in the course of shepherding them. Jesus thinks that he was glorified in the course of shepherding them instead of being discouraged. Amen. Paul also said in Philippians 4 1, he says, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown. Amen. Amen. It is well and joyful to say that. Like Felician seeing me. Oh, wow. My dear Trophy, you are my joy and crown. Wow. Amen. When we are seeing our silence, you see our silence. Please be confident and thankful to God. I'm seeing my joy and crown. Amen. Wow. We spend much time and energy, money, and everything to teach the Bible. Suffering, pain. But instead of being discouraged, they have to seek strength and say that these are my joy and crown. Amen. Amen. Six sheep. Amen. Yeah. Being sick and busy, it was very difficult. But after reading the passage, after teaching them, I was seeing them on a line. Wow, what wonderful my joy and crown. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But even though the shepherding is a most difficult job, but it is a glorious mission. As Jesus did. Amen. Jesus' first prayer for his disciples was to protect them to be one. Look at verse 11b. What did they give us? Verse 11b says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me. So that they may be one as we are one. Amen. Jesus prays that God will protect them so that they may be one. Jesus does not ask God to take them out of the world, but to protect them. Jesus knows that they should comfort the heart. World. They needed God's protection. God's work is also to unite and to breed up. God's work is also to unite and to breed up. Amen. Jesus prays that his disciples might obey his command to love one another. So that they might be one as Jesus was one with God. Jesus wants his disciples to have the most united into one with the love of God. Jesus wants, Jesus wants his disciples to have the most powerful weapon, unity in the love of God. Amen. Who? Satan is happy when we are divided. Satan, the devil, become, becomes happy when we are separated. But Satan runs away from us when we love one another fervently. Each one of the disciples was self-centered. Each one of them, they were self-centered. 
But Jesus has faith in them that they will be united in the love of God. We also sincerely pray that all our quakers in one may be one in the love of God. Amen. Through our unity, Jesus will enable all our quakers to conquer all the compasses of wonder. Do you believe so? Through our unity, especially this compass, we as one and the other, Jesus will enable us to conquer all the compasses of this holy country. You, Allah, and uh, I, Piana says. Do you hope so? May God enable us to do so. Amen. Jesus will enable us, all our quarkers, to conquer all the campuses of Uganda with the gospel of Jesus beginning to you are to other campuses. Amen. Jesus' second prayer for his disciples was to sanctify them by the truth. Jesus is going back to God's son. But his disciples had to remain in the world. The world would hate Jesus' disciples, thinking that they were bordering their sinful way of life. Jesus does not want his disciples to run away from the world. He wants them to remain in the world and do God's work. Eh? To remain in this world. Dirty word, full of bad deeds, but in those this dirty world, difficult world, is where we reveal God, is where we perform God's work. Amen. Look at verse 17. Verse 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is true. Jesus prays that God will sanctify them by the truth. In Greek, the verb sanctify has the same root with the word holy. Also, sanctify has meaning of separation or consecration. Jesus prays that God would make them a holy people of God through his work. Amen. Why is it so important for them to be sanctified by the truth? It is because God who is holy wants us to live a holy life. Amen. How could the disciples be sanctified? They must hold on to God's word. Because God's word changes their inner man. Without God's word, man has no man, man has no standard. Without God's word, humanity, man has no standard. Means that a man without God's word seems to be nothing. Uncomplete, incomplete. Not standard. May God help us to be standard men in this world. Amen. With a full package of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Without God's word, men cannot but live according to social consensus. The blindly follow the ungodly social consensus and swap their purity from immoral and demon possessed. Whoa. History teaches us that the Roman Empire was destroyed mainly by her immorality. Roman 12, Pastus 8 tells us, Do not conform from the pattern of this world. Jesus' people must satisfy themselves with the word of truth, the word of God. 
they should glow in their inner persons to be spiritually mature persons. In order to glow spiritually, we must hear Jesus' command. Luke, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 23 says, Then he said to them, Or if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. But Satan says, Enjoy yourselves. <laughs> the same as Satan. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy the life. Wow. Hmm? And the poor language, eat life. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, our God says, live a holy life. Amen. Amen. Satan says, enjoy life. But, God says, live in a holy life. Amen. You may enjoy a life, but holy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus' disciples are called to live a sanctified life by the truth of God. In order, in order to declare God who is holy through our practical lives. This is the reason why Jesus prays that God would, would sanctify them by the truth. Look at verse 19. For them I sanctify myself that too, they too may be truly sanctified. Firstly, Jesus for us, he has been sanctified through his crucifixion so that us too may be sanctified. Amen. Amen. Jesus sanctified himself by obeying God's will to die on the cross. In this way, Jesus taught us how to sanctify our souls through him. Thank God that Jesus prays for his disciples to be protected, to be one, and to be sanctified by his words of truth. Amen. Jesus prayed for his disciples to be protected, to be one, and to be sanctified. Amen. Part 3. Jesus prays for all believers. Amen. Jesus prays for all believers of all the world. Verse 20 says, My prayer is not them alone. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. In this verse, those who will believe refers to all the believers, including Gentile believers who will believe in Jesus through the disciples' message. Jesus' prayer was for all the believers in throughout all generations and the Holy world, including you and me. Thank Jesus who has prayed for us. Amen. Now we are the reason of his prayer. Amen. Amen. In essence, this prayer is the same as the Lord's prayer for all people of the Holy World. Jesus prays for all the people of the world so that they may come to know the Son and not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Can you believe? Jesus prays that each person might have a personal relationship with him and eternal life and a living hope in the kingdom of God. Amen. Jesus prays that all people in the world can be saved from their misery and distress. 
Jesus first prays for all the believers. Jesus first prayer for all the believers was to be one. Jesus prayed that all believers may be one. Twice in verse 21 and 22. And Jesus prayed that they may be brought to complete unity. Satan, <laughs> Satan, really wants to divide and do. In other words, Satan can't do for a uni united group or for united people. His only get for him is to separate them. Then look them. May God help us to be united so that Satan can't block our unity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. So Jesus honestly and repeatedly prayed for his disciples and all believers to be one. Jesus' second prayer for all the believers was. To be with Jesus where he is right now. In verse 24a, Jesus said, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. Jesus prays to God that all believers to be with Jesus in his glorious and eternal kingdom of God in heaven. Amen. Amen. Through Jesus' high priestly prayer, we learn his shepherd's prayer. As shepherds for God's sheep, we must pray first for our souls to live for the glory of God. Next, we must pray for Jesus' disciples or sheep to be protected, to be one, and to be sanctified by His Word. Mm -hmm. First, pray for ourselves, then pray for Jesus' sheep, or Jesus' disciples. We must also pray for the sheep of our sheep, <laughs> for the Simons of our Simons. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Uh, and all believers as well. Amen. <coughs> we must pray for all students to believe in Jesus, to have eternal life. Amen. May God help us to pray in Jesus as Jesus prayed. May God help us to pray as Jesus prayed. Amen. May God help us all our workers. In Hui and in Kigali and in all campuses in Rwanda to be one. Amen. Amen. And have complete unity in obedience to Jesus' earnest prayer. Thank God for Jesus who is praying even now for us and light hand of God. Amen. One word Jesus prayed. For us to be one. Amen. 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 Yeah, God, thank you for this powerful message. May you help us to meditate on it, write sincere, prayer free, daily testimonies. Thanking you for Jesus who has prayed for us. Yeah, God, help us to acknowledge this word. So that it may be true, reliable, and qualified Bible teachers through our <coughs> Bible study. We spend much time and energy teaching the Bible, but we hope that teaching them, helping them, it's our task. Is your God your work God? May you empower us, encourage us through the prayer in Jesus so that we may have strength to keep spreading the word of God on this world. 
dear God, we humbly uh, request you to give us strength and power. May you help us to be one as you are one with the Son Jesus, so that the evil Satan cannot break our unity. Lord Jesus, teach us, help us to love, to learn the Bible. The meaning of eternal life is to know God, the only true God, and Jesus Christ. The, for anyone who knows you and the Son Jesus have eternal life already. Dear God, help us to know you more. Help us to know you personally, in our hearts, not by mind or at the head. Dear God, help us to be your qualified servants on this world. And we hope that we will meet Jesus in heaven at right, way, right hand where he is praying for us right now. Finally, dear God, help us be one in your love. Help us to love each one of us, each another, so that we may have a complete unity as your servant. I do pray and believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.